Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Today join me as I share different ways to honour self-love and care. Let me share with you my altar that honours the rising up of spring, do some inner child work and DIYs along with some potion making for self-care, share a nurturing place that is dear to my heart, a freeing liberating walk within the enchanted woods and I make a start to my wedding planning that is all about love. So sit back, relax and join me today as we explore magical self-love, some things in fact that we might have completely forgotten about. But first, here is a word from today's sponsor, which is our fairies who know a lot about self-love. They want to share with you some of the simple yet silly little things they do to bring them a lot of love and fun every day. Currently the fairies are home, but they are off out for an adventure. But where to? Of course, the enchanted woods. All fairies love to make the most of nature's energies in each season. During winter, you may see a few fairies down the healing trail, admiring the sun's rays. The mossy den is where fairies go to roll in the lush carpet of moss and see the oak trees that lie in their winter state. Or at the grandmother you getting her nurturing energy. At the wise ones seeking inner wisdom, they also love to find fairy homes within the woods covered in luscious moss for warmth. Or next to a rushing stream, and it is here that we appear to have found one. A little fairy bathing her feet within the brook, picking herself up with a surge of winter's energy from the negative ions in the stream. This stream right here is the heart of the forest and it provides all who passes with the sound and chilly numbness on the feet with its waters in the middle of winter. The fairies had a wonderful bathe and ventured back home. And of course any fairy loves to treat themselves as soon as they get home with a cup of tea and often something sweet, always giving themselves the best crockery as they bought it for a reason and retreating with the treat to a safe place where they can ponder, look outside, take in the energy and relax after a stressful day's work. The Holly Fairy even wanted to take a little nap at this point, and why not? The only problem was that the bedding hadn't been changed by Cinderella Fumbelina like she said she would, so it was time for her to do the painstaking chore of changing the bedding. But Cinderella Fumbelina doesn't like chores, so when she does them, she makes them fun. She's a cheeky little fairy and often forgets all the chores, but when she does them, she does them in style. Now the bed was beautifully made, the holly fairy could rest and take her perfectly acceptable afternoon nap. But she woke up the next day. And she was okay with that. But she was a little peckish at this point. But then she realised that before she went to bed, she laid out her breakfast crockery already on the finest wooden tray. So now she was so excited to get up and eat and to start her day. Meanwhile, Cinderella Fumbelina was busy getting ready and she loved her vanity mirror. It was here she built up the confidence for her day, brushing her hair made her troubles go away. She builds up a sense of identity here and is confident to make herself her without any fear. Once she was ready, everyone was happy and self-love filled the air. And now it is Owen's turn to take over and share with you what self-love and care does after a little pamper. 
so enchanted ones. Those are a few simple things I do to keep myself happy. They may seem simple, but it's my duty today to tell you that self-love can be found in the most mundane moments. It's also my duty to tell you that spring is on the way, albeit slowly. It is that time in between midwinter and Ostara that there is a rise of energy beneath the surface and the birds around here just know that something is changing and it feels like love is in the air. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome. You've joined me today on a very wet day but we're embracing it and we're loving it. I hope you enjoyed my little fairy self-care tips then. I hope you're enjoying February. February is my favourite month of the year. It's all about being creative and honouring self-love and these final moments of winter and the picking up of spring and just seeing little subtle things here and there. So. I have written a little list here and on it is all the different ways that we can embrace self-love and all the different ways I'm going to share with you today of how we can do it because it's not just about love there's so many different emotions attached to it and so many different things because we don't just have to be a certain place and a certain time to show self-love for one another we could be just present in the moment and that's the best way to be so Self-love, it's all about giving yourself compassion, empathy, inner child work, shadow work, nurturing, nostalgia, gratefulness, silliness, embracing emotion, crying, laughing, crying and laughing at the same time, vulnerability, honesty, setting boundaries, letting go, saying no, and loving yourself. <laughs> But it could be longer, if I'm honest, and it's probably just the tip of the iceberg. But like I said before, the one and true thing that has really helped me to embrace self-love is to simply be in the moment. So all these different things that we're going to explore today are fantastic and great. It's good to have stuff sometimes, but it's truly amazing to be present. So won't you join me today? wintry beautiful rainy walk in the enchanted woods when we can just literally be present and do whatever we want to do because that's what life's all about let us go the moss is so green and vibrant oh my gosh and it's a bit damp <laughs> it's so soft from a young age i was always taught to hate the rain but because I'm from England, it rains so much. So why not just embrace it and everything it has to offer? Because I'm telling you, the colours in the woods are magnified when the rain is out. It's beautiful. I think finding joy in different weathers and seasons is an act of self-love as it gives us so much power. Listen guys, I am self-conscious in the woods because I'm worried that obviously people are going to see me from a distance. But when no one's looking, do you know what I do? I skip. Our mind can sometimes make us feel like we are limited in what we can do in life but once you start doing the things you really want to do little by little your brain will warm up to the idea. This is metallic right now. This is like a copper pen I had when I was about five years old. This is the most enchanted metallic colour I have ever seen. That is me inspiration for life this colour. <laughs> This is so bizarre. Why is there so many random like pieces of fur here? And they're just all separate. But I know exactly what I can do here. Perfect. A little protection reef for my forest friends and for me. And to confuse people when they walk by, of course. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh my goodness, guys. The moss in the mossy den is so vibrant. Oh my goodness, this is fluorescent. <gasps> I am often attracted to the mossy den as there is so much hiding underneath the moss here. And at a closer inspection, there is a whole fairy tale beneath. That leaf looks like a fairy door. Cute. Coming from this beautiful mossy tree. This is what one piece of moss looks like on its own. And this is what it all looks like together. I love finding the smallest things that make the bigger pictures. And I also found this fir tree that had the smallest ivy trailing up it. And my heart could just burst at the sight of it. These trails of ivy. Oh my goodness, they are the sweetest, precious thing so tiny, they're just with so miniature, miniature fairies. This just looks like broccoli to me. <laughs> Anyone now see that? A broccoli tree. And the award for the smallest ivy leaf goes to this little guy. You win it. How do you feel about that, hey? He's so cute. <laughs> I took a piece of ivy because I feel it's cooling me today. My hair is definitely falling out now. <laughs> but I like that, I look like a 90s rock star. I'm here for that. Then I was called somewhere by a shade of yellowy green, my favorite type of green. And it was down a boggy path. And this shade of green lied in the catkins. So many of them growing on these beech trees here. Catkins are seen as signs of fertility in the forest and usually it's a sign that the tree is male. When the catkins dry, pollen is created and then blows in the wind, ready to find its female companion. That little one droplet, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Is it raining still? It's raining again. I always find in winter, I'm always drawn towards these bluey undertone greens because blue is like ice. But in the lead up to spring, I'm more inspired towards yellow undertone greens because of the sun and the hope that that brings. That's so just something that, I don't know, it's, it's like a fresh green, isn't it? But you would be happy to know that I am wearing pops of pink today for self-love because my patreons and my spirit guides are telling me <laughs> that I need to embrace vulnerability and love that way so that's why I'm doing that. So I actually started this video gosh about a week ago now. I started just being inspired by all these different things in the woods and then I started bringing them into my home and the loving properties of all of these things are so wonderful for self-love especially at my altar. So you've joined me at my altar. You can see I have a lot of green, as usual. Green will represent love and the heart chakra, but you could also use pink that vibrates on the same frequency. I am a lover of green, so of course you'll see a lot of that here. I've surrounded my altar with Bridget dolls, one that I made in my little workshop craft along, and one that was given me as a gift, and I love her so much, so she sits down here. I've also got a picture of a green goddess that I drew, which I guess you could say is Bridget, and she lies here. She 
she's also a symbol of the green that we can see in the forest right now if your forest is not covered in snow. A little cute bird's nest up here. I think it's so beautiful being woken up by the birds in the morning. You just feel kind of rejuvenated, like something's shifting, something's changing. So to honour that with a birdie nest, I think is great. It's surrounded by fur and ivy, also fur cones. Ivy especially is a really good symbol to have at the altar because that also vibrates on our heart chakra level as well as mistletoe. And I was very lucky to find some mistletoe in a tree that was quite low and I picked a few of them. I found it in my book of reflection I have here. I thought what a nice way to keep this book bound with love that I found in the forest. I've also put a lot of moss on some bits and pieces in here because oh my goodness I can't get enough of that stuff. It's amazing and makes everything look magical and enchanted. I have my bridge across here. I found some catkins in the woods and they make me really really happy. It's like they are February's wisteria the way they fall so delicate they have that yellow undertone green which we love they're just delicate and fairy tale-esque and there is a catkin fairy so be on the lookout for those they like to hide in trees i've added a little piece of holly down here i love finding really tiny tiny little pieces of holly i think they're so so sweet and give me inspiration for my wedding <laughs> which we'll be talking about later. <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna be placing that here. I put some more fur at the top here as my other fur from Yule was drying out. And I'm gonna keep on replacing that until spring comes in. I've got some lovely candles. They smell like rhubarb. Oh, perfect. So I'm gonna put those in the holder. And my book of reflection has run out of paper. And it's a good thing that I bought one with a bound in it. Because I'm going to put a new block of paper in there to change it up. I'm also going to be doing something in here today because self-love and self-care is of course honouring yourself, making time for yourself, but one other thing that I talk about I think like all the time and that is honouring your inner child. The things I love now are things I used to love doing as a child. I think when we were young our soul was so pure that it gravitated and did those things without thoughts to say oh you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. And to come back to those things when we're older we might find excitement and fun and that's something that I want to look into more this year. I mean to be honest I feel like I am. <laughs> always embrace my inner child because she's always very very happy but I want to do more for her because she is the star of the show and I feel like I would be best friends with my little girl child now. She always wanted to grow into somebody like me and I'm her and I think oh my goodness I am extremely lucky and actually it makes me quite emotional when I think about things like that. So yeah let's get on with this really fun activity and see what we find out because some of the things I like to do were very interesting. No judgment though guys, no judgment. There's nothing too silly. Silliness is what makes us get through the day. Whilst changing the papers in my book, I thought of another act of self-love, and that is to be proud of yourself. Today I am proud as I have a whole volume of reflection work that I can keep as a book. I mean, I'm not sure if I'll ever read it again or if anyone else will even be remotely interested or even understand it, but nonetheless, I love it and will keep it forever. Proud of myself. And now I was ready to start my inner child work. And if you don't know where to start, simply start by feeling your heart center and calling upon your inner child, or by looking at a picture of yourself as a child. They will tell you and show you what they want to do. Trust me, 
things will start flooding in of what they want to say to you or show you. I got images of bright coloured pictures behind my eyes, playing with toys, giggling, just fun things that made life enjoyable. Sometimes you'll think of things you didn't do when you were little, but that inner child longed to do them. So I wrote them all down, no matter how silly, in hopes to recreate some of these in a new way. You know what? That was really emotional, doing that. Something sparked within me whilst I was thinking about these things. It's like my inner child is like reaching out to me and trying to tell me something that it wants to wants to do these things. But to be honest, I do do a lot of these things. I'll give you some examples. Planning my day from beginning to end. I love doing this so much and I feel like it gives my mind such focus. I even plan sometimes to just do nothing for like half an hour or something and I feel like that's such a good way of just having some me time. And I like setting the alarm so I know what the time is. Tidying up game. I used to play a game, kind of like musical statues. This is always on my birthday too, where you had to tidy up and then when the music stops, you have to stop tidying tidying up. I love that game and I'm not gonna lie, tidying up is where I feel most happy. I'm just so mindful and it just makes me really, really, um, yeah. <laughs> Like I said guys, no judgement. No judgement here, okay? Making dens. I used to love making dens and I also used to love finding hidden places within nature and making like a house in there. And I think we all know that I love to do that now. Being a control freak with colours, I used to love yellow and I wanted everything in my room to be yellow. The furniture, bedding, walls, ceiling, accessories, it had to be yellow. And um, I think I'm pretty the same now. Being in the Wendy house and watching outside. I had a really cute little Wendy house that had fairies on the front of it. I've just made kind of connection in my head. I kind of do the same thing now that I used to do in the Wendy house. I sit in the cozy nook and I watch outside and I just like kind of make a note of what's going on out there. I used to love doing that in the Wendy house when I was younger. But when I was younger, I actually had a book that used to write down what people were doing and what times they were doing it. I don't know, maybe I'm meant to be a spy in another life. I don't know. <laughs> being with my grandma, being with my mummy, that's what made me emotional, I think. That's what made me emotional because it's that nurturing energy that's so beautiful when you're younger and you yearn for that a lot. When you're older, being tucked in with my teddies every night, of course. And one that I was really excited by when I remembered it, I used to love making potions in the bath. And I also used to love making potions with my mum's expired food all in like a big bowl. And I used to take it back to my room and I used to leave it in a drawer for like months so that we really moldy <laughs> but that's given me an idea because I used to love making these potions sometimes my mum didn't know about them of course I got a bit told off when I was found out about them the thing is now is that I'm an adult I'm not a child and actually I can do these things with real ingredients now I don't need to be doing it with you know make-believe things I can make a potion with all my different teas and you know what that's exactly what I'm going to do from altar work, to inner child work, to potions. Who even am I today? This is a rare occasion, I can tell you that. I've taken you here, as along with making my potion, I also wanted to share something with you that I've been writing recently. And it's a little witchy recipe book dedicated to all the different teas and recipes that I know. Something my inner child would have loved when she was watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch when she had a magical spell book. I have written them down alphabetically along with their properties and what chakra they align to. So whenever I feel a particular mood, it will help me. I also have some magical bakes in the back, but I've still a long way to go with this book and it's taken a lot of effort, but I know it will be a lifetime in the making. So today I'm going to balance out my root chakra and my solar plexus chakra. So I'm going to mix a couple of different ingredients together. I can already see that ashwagandha is great for solar plexus and root chakra. So I'm definitely going to be using that. And hemp is great for the solar plexus too. Cinnamon might give it a really lovely taste actually. Cinnamon. Oh, and of course honey. 
So let's make this little potion to help me out. So this potion was going to be to help ground me and open up my heart center. I have been collecting antiques for a long time and every weekend you will find me at the antiques shop finding unique spoons, trivets and teacups for purely this occasion right here and the odd afternoon tea. That is surrounding myself with the kind of vibes to help me get into the mindset of what I am doing and I took it very seriously. I have no idea what this spoon is for, but it is the cutest little spoon I've ever seen. It's from my grandma's house, and now it's my new potion mixer spoon. I need a teaspoon of hemp. To make this concoction, I added one teaspoon of hemp and one teaspoon of ashwagandha, and this was a mixed blend with hibiscus, which is great for opening the heart chakra. I then grounded up some cinnamon, as I love putting my energy into it this way. Every step of the way, imagining how I was going to feel after I drunk this concoction, which would be relaxed and grounded with my heart in the right place. Oh, it's going an interesting colour. It's going like a... The tea was a success. It tasted so nice. I cannot believe this whole process took 10 minutes. And sometimes I have to remind myself that 10 minutes of mindlessly scrolling on my phone could be so much more productive. But sometimes that's easier said than done. Safe to say that my little girl child is very happy now. And along with doing things that make my inner child happy, I also want to honour her. And I have brought a new compartment to be my inner child self-love altar. I wanted it to look like my fairy's home, covered in moss and pieces of woodland. My inner child felt a little jealous that the fairies had a home, but she didn't. So I started making a little home where she could feel herself. Again, I felt my heart centre and pictured my inner child there, working alongside me, following her guidance. And every time I thought I was finished, I wasn't. My inner child kept wanting to add more moss, and if she had it her way, it would be raining moss.
I then got out my little box of precious finds and knew that this was the ideal project to use some of them. After all, it was her that squealed at the tiniest fur cones that ever existed, and it was her that had me pick up the tiniest pieces of bark covered in moss. snapped in half my special wishbone stick from the secret U for this occasion and it gave the home the whimsical feel I was after. After I had to tidy up and placed the little house at the top of my altar but I didn't stop there. I was having too much fun and the wall around my altar was looking a little bare and it's safe to say my inner child well and truly took over at this point as she started drawing on the walls. <laughs> drawing on the walls is something I wasn't allowed to do in the past, but now was the time to get carried away with my creativity and make this home an explosion of enchantment. The painting went on into the night, but before I got carried away, I decided to fill it with precious items to honor my inner child. Things like this heart-shaped fluorite to help clear mental fog. My tiny bear friend. A little bottle I made up of tiny nature that my inner child adored. A white feather for purity. Smoky quartz for clarity and connecting. My birthstone amethyst, but also amethyst helps to open the crown chakra for imagination. Stones for self-expression such as blue calcite. Adventurine for optimism and love green amethyst which helps connect the crown chakra with the heart chakra and malachite which is a great healing stone and it was complete and as you can see i decided the wall needed to be painted too and i love how it came out i was a bit skeptical of it at first because i thought it looked childish but then i thought wasn't that the point of this exercise? I have grown to adore it and you can add anything that resonates with you to your inner child altar. Items from childhood, items that make you happy. There is no right or wrong here. You do you. So back in the woods and next I visited my wise tree friend to seek her nurturing energy. Hello my grandma friend, my beautiful grandma. Also I thought it would be fun to pull an oracle card whilst holding the little piece of ivy that I picked up. Today I pulled the courage card, some wise advice for the smallest little things that I was drawn towards today in the woods and perhaps it might have been aimed towards my inner child. So I ventured here to the grandmother yew tree. I love coming here like I said before because of her nurturing energy. Sometimes I love to pick an oracle card here because I feel like she is my grandmother's spirit. I had such a beautiful relationship with my grandma and she really believed in me and that stuck with me forever. But also just a grandma figure and just a figure that we can look up to whether it be a real person or a spirit guide or an angel. That's something that I think is so beautiful and so lovely Something that we can do for ourselves so that's what I see this tree as but of course I know everybody doesn't have a beautiful wonderful yew tree they can venture to I completely am aware of that <laughs> so what I've also done in my house is I've set up another little altar but it's at a place in my home where I can give myself self-love and nurture too Welcome to my dressing table, a place that helps to provoke self-love of myself but also where I seek guidance from my guides and where I can be both vulnerable but powerful at the same time. Getting ready for the day can be so nurturing and there are some really simple things we can do to help align ourselves with our chakras. 
Moments like brushing our hair will help unlock our crown chakra. Dressing how we want helps to align our throat chakra and simply caring for ourselves will unlock our heart and root chakra. And the more aligned we are, the more our negative thoughts can revert to loving, kind thoughts. I used to hate my ears as I was told they weren't normal. But now they have become my best feature as I realized that maybe I am an elf. Ready for my day. So, welcome to my dressing table. I've been wanting to share this with you for a long, long time and you might have seen other clips of it in my other videos, but I wanna show and share it with you today in a little bit more detail than usual because this is a place where I go to for self-love and just to kind of be my main character, to channel my grandma and my mum's energy and just so much love. So whatever space I'm given in my home, I always turn it into some sort of altar to honour something. That's just something that I do. <laughs> what I've done subconsciously over the years is I've gathered so many items that bring me nostalgia and they remind me of my grandma and they remind me of my mum and when I was growing up because I always saw them at these beautiful, luxurious dressing tables, somewhere that they could go to put on their perfume and they had like just dangling thousands of pearls and beautiful jewellery and I was always looking in awe like I can't wait to be that person one day and I just looked in my mum's drawers and I just like looked at all her jewellery and sometimes I stole it and I got in trouble but now I'm allowed to be that person I'm allowed to have that stuff and here it is all the stuff I have got and I know who I am and the person I've grown to be because of my mum and my grandma and their nurturing energy and I'm really close to my mum I was really close to my grandma a lot of these items I previously owned as a child but I got rid of those items I have no idea why and then when I went to antique shops or fairs I found them and I back home to me because I love them now. Obviously went through a phase where I just was clearing everything out but no 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 I don't want to do that. My three piece vanity set here just couldn't live without that. These three little cute cats here that I had when I was younger I don't know where they went but when I went to three different individual antique fairs I found one of them at each time so now they're all reunited and on my dressing table. A little swan here that's from my mum's dressing table when I was growing up. This box here was given to me by my lovely friend. This really reminds me of the chocolate box in Matilda, my favourite film when I was growing up and that has all my brooches and different rings in it from my grandma and my mum just channeling their energy here and really kind of just communicating with my grandma here. It's just something that I feel like we could bond over. Over. I feel her presence here at this dressing table and that's why I put a picture of her here and this was a picture of her in the 1940s and my granddad actually had this picture of her on his bedside table when they were courting and I thought that was just so wonderful and representative of the times like here's my love and she is stunning she is so beautiful and classy and classic and that's just something that I've always wanted to be because of her again channeling grandma vibe love it. Next to my grandma's picture here I have the words smile because it's so important to smile and it sounds so cheesy I know but when I see that word smile and that picture next to it it reminds me of my grandmother's smile not really that one that's in the picture there but like her older old lady smile there's something so beautiful about the comfort of an old lady's smile I don't know and I'm just gonna cry because it's so <laughs> and I think self-love can also be remembering that there are angels and ancestors watching over us and they want to protect us and they love us no matter what and I also have a little feather here this came to me at a time of need it's half white and half black I don't know if you remember this from my autumn video from last year and this I felt was given to me by my grandma to show me my light side and my dark side and just the balance that they bring and it's just such a lovely reminder of that but also my dressing table 
core is divided up into my light side and into my dark side, so my dark kind of mysterious aura that I give off sometimes and sometimes I like to wear like gothic jewellery that makes me feel really powerful but then also this lovely light side, these silvers and these more frail tones, things that just make me feel more loving and sensitive and pure. I love those two different sides so yes of course I have divided them up into my different stands on my dressing table because that's something that I love to do, organising things. And the jewellery I usually wear every day is usually very similar. I always wear this necklace but actually recently I felt so different from this necklace. It kind of describes our family ties and bloodlines because it's a Celtic symbol but also it describes me in a cocoon and I felt like I was very much in a cocoon these last few years just kind of trying to just gather all my nurturing warmth and love but now I feel like I'm coming out of that cocoon and I feel like I'm just embracing and I've become this butterfly so what I like to do is I like to just talk to my guides and ask them what jewellery should I wear today? What am I feeling? Because it can really be like an oracle card, the jewellery you pick and what it means and how it speaks to you in the moment. And at the moment I'm very much drawn to amethyst because my birthday is coming up. I'm very much drawn to silvers too. So I think I'm going to wear today my beautiful amethyst necklace. This is just a stunning necklace. I love it so much and it's silver, something that I don't wear often but I just feel like I'm channeling those vibes at the moment. It's Aquarius season and I'm in love with it. But then something really strange happened the same day in my mum's garden where a butterfly landed on my hand. This is a peacock butterfly and we can see them around just waking up from hibernation. They symbolise transformation and it was such a beautiful message from my spirit guides. On the left of my dressing table, I have another self-love altar, which is another surface I have in my home that I've obviously turned into some sort of altar. On it, I have a picture of myself. Some might say that is vain, or it looks like a memorial, but I don't care. I love this picture of myself, and it makes me feel confident. I've placed around it self-love bottles, self-love crystals like trinkets and bracelets, such as rose quartz, amethyst, and fluorite, and I charge them up in this selenite bowl surrounded by more family antiques. Like I said before, I have a hard time opening up to colours, but I've learnt recently that it is good to, as you will unlock a new frequency and a part of you that you never knew existed. And in this case for me, pink has really unlocked some vulnerability and love. I'm ready for the day. So I've been so inspired by this time of year and I love it so much and I've decided that even my wedding is going to be this time of year and it's going to be next year on in bulk so February 1st and I'm so excited to share every detail with you if you would like a series on that let me know because you know like I feel like this is what I've been born to do make a wedding <laughs> so I started planning it already and here's what I've done so far Picture an evergreen forest, but at that point in between winter and spring, evergreens, ivy, holly, fir, moss, hunter's green, rosemary and dried flowers from the year before like hydrangeas and of course snowdrops, the hope and love that they bring. Also, picture that moment from Lord of the Rings that Arwen and Aragorn shared together in Rivendell. Medieval fun, 
games and photo booth, and nature that has been twisted and tangled to look intertwined and everlasting as one together. The most exciting detail though is the inspiration that I got from the secret garden and the love that she feels when she sees the garden for the first time. It gave such promise and hope for the future from the little buds starting to grow. And it's that loving feeling that you were always meant to find, but didn't know it existed until you found it. Anyway, those are the vibes I'm going for and I'm very excited about it. And today I decided to start making over some candlesticks from an antique shop. was to make them look as if they had been found within the secret garden, slightly tarnished but looked like they were so loved in the past and of course covered in moss. Now you have joined me in the woods one last time as there is one more thing that I want to do today and it's a magical self-love DIY. For this I needed to forage some nature that brings me joy and love. Things that I gravitate towards but also nature that calls itself out to me upon this walk and I found some beautiful nature. The beauty of this time of year is that along with the evergreens and the new sprouts and buds, we can also see the remnants from the past year. And I love a skeleton leaf and a skeleton petal so much. I have gathered loads of different things today because I'm really excited to share with you that I am planning my 
bouquet for self-love in my wedding but also I feel like this bouquet is going to be somewhat of a gift to me of self-love. What I've done, so before I came in the woods I put on all my rose quartz jewellery centred around my heart and I've also come out with my self-love bottle. I told you guys that I'm really trying to open myself up to these new colours because I've been so cut off my whole life like I said to like accepting new colours. I've always been really obsessive over certain things and I can tell you that I love pink now. Who am I? I love pink and I feel like I'm so ready to give to other people now I've done this video and like really help myself. So I've been going on a journey in this video too. You might not realise that but yeah I'm so excited to just yeah give back to people now I've really nurtured myself too. So yeah that's something that I've learnt along this journey. So I have gathered lots and lots of different things, different furs, like I've told you recently that I've been trying to get to know the different furs in the forest so like I know how to work with them a little bit more. I've also got items like ivy, holly. I told you earlier I had holly on my altar but I want holly in my bouquet for a lot of different reasons. One of them is the holly king is waning this time of year and I really like the look of really tiny holly. It's called soft holly just to show us that the holly king is kind of coming to an end and gonna lose his battle soon with the Oak King who's gonna be on the rise. So that's one of the reasons why that's in there. And hydrangeas. I love the look of hydrangeas that have gone past, just the look of their fairy tale wings. They're in my home at my dressing table and they remind me of past loved ones, things that in the past, people that still have a place in my heart. So that will be my grandma's share of the wedding. Um, so, right, let's make this bouquet. I don't know how it's gonna look, but it's gonna be really fun and exciting and just a lovely little thing I can do by myself, for myself. Okay. Oh, the ivy looks so good in there, mate. The ivy looks amazing. I'm not going for perfectionism here, but in a way, when I don't go for perfectionism, it becomes perfect to me. Just like life, really. Of course, this is a massive inspiration for my wedding and a bouquet at a wedding, spiritually, is to help keep negative spirits away from the bride. But today, I felt as if I was marrying myself and the woods, because Enchanted Ones, if we ever lose everything or anything, it always comes down to the fact that we will always have ourselves and our heart. So enchanted ones, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what was your favourite below. I hope I have given you some ideas on how to practice self-love and care and just remember the most magical thing isn't the stuff, simply to be present, all my love, Alwyn. saying guys I have no idea okay, cool. welcome to my dressing table welcome Mwah.
Beautiful, darling. Beautiful. Uh, oh. Horsey. There's a horsey out there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these. Like nature's knuckle dusters, aren't they, mate? Brown, 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 brown. I forget you. Love that.